Well, there's a lot of alarm going out there that it could get really bad. I suppose that might happen if there's some sort of accident. But it's also important to remember that I don't think that Beijing wants a crisis to spiral out of control as well. They want to send a message. They want to send a strong message. But um, I don't think they will want to do anything that's particularly reckless. So I think it's important to keep that in mind. A lot of this messaging intends to create alarm, intends to create fear, and to suggest that any effort to uh, do what China does not like uh, with Taiwan brings substantial costs and substantial risks. But coercion itself, you know, has its own costs, has its own risks. So it's important to sort of balance that kind of uh, threatening behavior with a consideration of what Beijing actually wants and what Beijing's able to carry off as well. All right. I understand what you're saying. I mean, at this juncture, with the economy slowing as sharply as it is and China still trying to, to manage COVID and a, a debt crisis and a property crisis there, the last thing they want is this sort of conflagration. Uh, I, I get that and I hear you. But going by recent actions by China's military, and this is well before the visit, this has been going on for months now, uh, foreign aircraft that have been military aircraft that, which have been patrolling uh, in or near the area have been challenged by Chinese mili military aircraft in an increasingly aggressive and even dangerous way. And this is something that uh, Australian officials, Canadian officials, U.S. officials have protested. So it seems that going into this visit, the PLA or rather the PLAAF are not in a very generous mood, wouldn't you say? And doesn't that not increase the chances of not so much escalation, but, but an accident or a mistake? Absolutely. So it's important to remember that those incidents have happened um, not in the Taiwan area. They've been happening in the East China Sea, north of Taiwan, or the South China Sea, south of Taiwan, um, and also, you know, further out in the Pacific. So this is a general kind of behavior that the PLA has been engaging in. And certainly that's one of the risks that um, to sh send a strong message, sometimes the military will take aggressive behavior that can lead to an accident and indeed there's a lot of military activity happening around taiwan at this point in time there's the pla stuff uh there's the u.s military that's in the region uh, in the area and also taiwan's having its pre-planned annual military exercises the hangwang 38 so there's a lot of military activity going on there there's a chance there's some sort of accident may occur uh which is i suppose where it comes down to how careful the different sides are and so far what re the reports that we've had is that the pla side has been more willing to push the envelope so i suppose it's important for them to keep in mind what the larger uh picture what the larger goal they want is